This is the marvelous mirror between both players. By that we mean, of course, they're both playing Teamer Aetherworks Marvel. 75 card mirror, same shirt, uh, roughly the same haircut. Very few <laughs> advantages to be gleaned. So Jim Davis, Servant of the Conduit in play. His hand appears to be two puzzle knots and a tireless tracker. Got a lot of energy in reserve. For Jessup, he's got two energy, three lands, but he's got two vessels. His hand might be making more easily than Jim's is. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of looks at a marvel here, assuming that he doesn't already have it. And just was the kind of player his posturing does never it never gives anything away. He's a very difficult player to read. And from Jim Davis, it's going to be Wood Weaver's Puzzle Knot. Up to seven energy. This seven energy means if he draws a marvel next turn, he can both cast and immediately activate it. It's a good spot to be in, but you need the marvel. Notably in these post-sideboard games, these players do have some number of ceremonious rejection and negate. Jessup was representing blue mana there. So if Jim did have it, it's not necessarily incentivized to cast it in that window. And here we see Jessup does vessel into the marvel. Yes, now he does have Aetherix marvel. He's going to untap. He'll be able to cast the marvel. However, he has to respect the fact that Jim might have ceremonious rejection. Mm -hmm. And Jessup doesn't have six energy yet. Right. And if Jessup has a counter spell of his own, he can't cast Marvel on this turn and leave up a counter for a potential Marvel from Jim. So, fourth land. Does he respect the counter spell? He does. He's just going to say go. I like it. So, back to Jim Davis. His draw, not a Marvel. It's going to be a basic forest. Does have a tireless tracker though, so we can start grinding out some value playing that game. Given yeah. that Jessup has a face up Marvel, you know, the tracker line is generally a lot weaker than that, but he needs to draw into his Marvel. There's some argument for Jim posturing as if he's able to interact with Jessup. Though as soon as Jessup gets to a point where he has Marvel plus negate, that stops mattering. And this is interesting. Look at Jim really try to sell the ceremonious rejection. He's gonna go ahead and use an energy to play tireless tracker and then play his land to get a clue. But he left up that island. He's really mm -hmm. trying to, he's hoping that Jessup doesn't just jam here. Right, and he has an abundance of energy that only spends him down to six. Um, so Yeah, I like this a lot. Not completely free, but the cost was minimal. Definitely like the play. Another vessel sacrifice for Jessup. He sees Aether Hub or Ulamog. He'll go with the land, it's Aether Hub. We already know he has Marvel in hand, so any energy producer is pretty good news for Jessup. This is also a matchup where you generally want to make a lot of land drops. Sometimes it's just going to come down to casting Emrakuls, casting and activating Ishkanas, especially in these builds where they have the counter spell where the Marvel is less likely to actually resolve. So we go back to Jessup, and you see he starts the turn with a seven-card hand. All he's done is played cantrips this game. And it looks like he's got a lot of servants of the conduit get killed. Three of them now. <laughs> so here's four mana from Jessup. Is he going to go for the Marvel? He's going to go for Chandra. Yep. So neat, yeah. And I, he's trying to hold up his own ceremonious while playing Chandra. Mm -hmm. This is smart. Yeah, just respect that. If the counter spell that Jim has is negate, sure, you countered my Chandra. I can just go for Marvel on the following turn. Yeah, it means you didn't negate my Marvel, so I'm pretty happy. Right. Also, just shoving with the Chandra, if it resolves, you kill Jim's tireless tracker, which is what's tethering him to this game. Outside of that, Jim doesn't have a lot going on. Chandra, minus threes, will kill off Jim's tireless tracker. Andrew will say go. Jim draws a card, though, off the clue. So Tyler's Tracker doing some work. Draws him, though, into another land. That's not too much help. Back to Jim Davis. He is looking in a tough spot as he draws a tune with the Aether. He just doesn't have much action, and Andrew Jessup is playing this conservatively with counter magic. Mm -hmm. Jim definitely wants to attack down this Chandra. If you let that survive and it starts adding two mana on Jessup's turns, he's accelerated 
very quickly into that position where he's just casting the spells that matter in the matchup. Could even get in a spot where he could cast two marvels in the same turn. And Jim's done what I like about Jim's play here is he's he's not drawing anything, but he's doing a great job of making Andrew play slowly. It's giving him extra turns to draw something. Now the problem is that if Jim doesn't draw anything, this doesn't matter. Eventually Andrew starts casting cards with counter spell backup. Mm -hmm. When Andrew does, he'll start to realize Jim never had anything in the first place. Right, and Andrew is just ahead on cards, too. So it just right. comes a time where you start bullying his hand. And if he has a couple things, sure, he counters your first couple spells, but if your fist is just full of haymakers, just keep making them. You can only pretend so much that you have a good hand. Eventually, you actually have to have it. Right, you're not just relying on respect. You're relying on respect to the point of actually making a tactical error and not jamming when you're supposed to, given the resources available. Yeah, yeah or maybe, you know, if... If Jim get, buys enough turns with this kind of play, maybe he'll actually draw the cards he was pretending to have in the first place. True. But he hasn't done that. No. And that that's where his hand of, you know, another puzzle knot doesn't doesn't really play. He's got down to two cards. And he'll say go. And now now we'll see just how many more turns Andrew's willing to respect Jim's holdings. He's only got two cards. Andrew has Ceremonious plus Marvel. I think plus second Marvel. At some point, he just starts trying these. Right. There are some matchups in Standard where Ceremonious has a little bit extra value when the counter spell is Void Shatter, and you get to actually fight a counter war with oh, that, it. That's so disgusting. Rejection doesn't do that in this matchup. Yeah. And Andrew playing a tune with Aether this turn. That means he's up to five energy. If you add the Aether Hub in his hand, he is ready for the Aetherworks Marvel. Mm-hmm. A tune finds a basic island. And Andrew will go ahead and play the island he found. Is he ready to play into counter spells yet? No. He'll go ahead and just pass the turn. Jim will continue to build up his energy reserves with the Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot, now up to, it looks like, uh, 11 energy. Mm -hmm. Given that Jim has two cards in hand, you probably confidently start jamming your Haymakers if you have three or more. If you just have two, there is the potential that you cast them and you just lose to what Jim already has. Jim's hand just not helping draws another land. Hits with Servant of the Conduit. Now, there is this concern, right? If he gives Jim enough turns, Jim can just top deck an Emrakul and cast it. Yes. You can still Ceremonious Rejection the 13-13. And oh, gosh, it counters that too, doesn't it? It's <laughs> right. so good. And Ugh. Jessup not super vulnerable to a Mind Slaver at this point. Yeah. No, uh, that one mana to counter my, my 13 drop feels bad. <laughs> and now Andrew makes a play. He's going to play Aetherworks Marvel. And the bad news for Jim is the jig is up. He doesn't have anything. And now Andrew knows it. The Marvel just straight away resolves. And that means on the following turns, Jessup is He's likely not to be respecting more now. proactive with whatever he has. Taps the Marvel. Well, he could still miss. We see six cards. And it looks like we do see a miss. Um, natural state. Second Marvel is a reasonable option. He's going to go ahead and take his first free spell. Presumably something that makes some energy. Yeah, let Maybe him a try Wood again. Weaver's puzzle knot. That's exactly what he's going to do. Three energy off that. And I, I suppose you're right. He's got three more lands in play. He can try again next turn. Mm -hmm. And that is what he'll get. All the spells in the world you could have for free, and you choose Wood Weaver's puzzle knot. <laughs> St <laughs> Standard is great. But three energy, three life for Jessup. Can hold up that counter spell. I got a lot of respect for Woodweaver's Puzzle Knot as somebody who frequently played Trigon of Mending as the 23rd card in my draft decks. Yeah, you play any artifact. <laughs> you got to get to Metalcraft. And for Jim, it's just another basic. It's not... He's bought himself a lot of turns. He's played this well. Um, if you buy yourself five turns, and on these five turns extra you get, you draw five lands, you're still going to lose. Right. You can only do so much. You have to actually produce cards that can win the game. And we might see Jim start to more actively dump his hand here. The I, the bluff that he actually has something relevant, you see now he plays Puzzle Knot, it does, just doesn't work anymore. Right. We've been there. Jessup knows there's nothing. Mm -hmm. 
So Jim passes on n-step, Jessup sacrifices the puzzle knot. Goes up to seven energy, thanks to Aetherwick's Marvel. And he's going to spin the wheel again. He missed the first time. Untaps, he's going to try again. Draws another Marvel. He's getting into the territory where he can cast the majority of the stuff he has going on. There are two Ulamogs. He's a little out of range for that. Yeah, it's not just that Andrew Jessup has the Marvel. He also has more cards in hand. He also has the same number of lands in play. He's just he's just winning. Mm -hmm. So six more. We see Evolving Wilds, Vessel, Forest. There's Emrakul, Botanical Sanctum, and Harness Lightning. So the first Eldrazi in the game has hit the table. She's 13-13. Andrew will cast her. We'll get Jim's next turn. And he'll learn just how little is in Jim's hand now. Mm -hmm. And Andrew still has Ceremonious Rejection in hand. So if Jim draws Marvel, you know, frequently in and a lot of the builds yeah. in this matchup, there's nothing you can do. If they draw it, he can just make Jim cast it into Ceremonious Rejection. It's not bad either. Jim's going to crack a puzzle knot. Goes to uh, 14 energy. Do that. And now it's Andrew's turn. <laughs> Basic Mountain in hand. Draws the card. Chandra Torture Defiance. That one, you actually you can't screw it up too much. No, you can play it and make it use all, three of its loyalty. Yeah, make it shoot Emrakul. That's right. a, a poorly advised decision. The Servant's already going to die in combat, but you, know, you can just shoot the Servant. You know, whatever. There's a <laughs> couple ways to play that. <laughs> Is there any reason that you'd want to plus it and hope to find a really destructive card? You know, something that Jim real, you know, some sort of. I can't think of anything spell. in this yeah. matchup, really. What Andrew chooses to do is just have Jim not cast it. He kills the servant of the conduit and gives Jim another turn. Jim draws another land. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just been that kind of game. And if you do cast it and just take it down, it does survive. Jim could theoretically draw and cast an Ulamog with the plus ability by making two red mana. So I like not casting there. Four mana is going to be Chandra. He's going to plus her to try to find something, if Jessup even lets him, and no, he'll negate. That's a huge show of strength to negate a Chandra. It yeah. doesn't even when really When he can just yeah. attack it with the Emrakul. Yeah, like, yeah don't, no redraws, just, just no. Right. World Breaker picked up for Andrew Jessup. He will attack with Emrakul. Thanks to these Puzzle Knots, Jim has a couple of turns to work with, but that's about it. He goes down to 19 on the first swing. I'd be happy to World Breaker that island off the battlefield. It's unlikely to matter, but it's Jim's only blue source. Yeah, you see uh, five card types in Jim's yard and eight lands in play. I would love to take, take away a land. Mm -hmm. That means he can't cast Emrakul. Andrew agrees. World Breaker gets rid of island. It's exiled. Now a top deck Emrakul is not castable for Jim. And Jessup still representing Ceremonious Rejection. Actually, I should back up. Jim has five laid out Delirium on the top of his graveyard, but it should be six. That Chandra he lost is a sixth card type, so Emrakul is still alive. Mm -hmm. Were it not for the rejection and just upset. Yeah, and just for the record, for those of you watching home, that is the kind of thing that we would not correct here mm -hmm. uh, because Jim is tracking that on his own. Uh, we can't coach the players, so if Jim is count, you know, if Jim's counting his graveyard wrong, that's fine. If he went to try to cast the Emrakul for eight, we'd say, hey, that's uh, too much mana. Yeah, only if it leads to an illegal action right. do you make a correction there. Well, here's an action. Jim drawing another Servant of the Conduit. That's not going to play. And now we have a swing for 18 from Jessup. And we're getting very close to being lethal. Grizzly Bear with Upside is a very impressive looking card if you were playing in 1998. Uh, Emrakul looks like some kind of fever dream nightmare if you're from that era. Jim's going to win the Most Energy Made in One Game Award. But that... It's not going to do much. No. 17 energy. And for the returning player's champion, his back is on the wall. Yeah, takes the damage. He's going to go to one. I believe Andrew has him covered with a counter spell. Marvel spun twice, hitting Emrakul. Mar Andrew cast World Breaker, and we go to Jim's last turn. It's a draw phase. He hasn't even looked at it. He does. It's an Aether Hub. It's not going to play. <laughs> Taps all the mana, casts Aether Hub. This and that is going to be the match. 
2016 is going to have a new Players' Championship. Jim Davis falling 2-0 to teammate Andrew Jessup means that Jim is out of the tournament, and for Andrew Jessup, he is into the quarterfinals. If Jim had to lose, I'm sure he's happy it was to a teammate. Of course, unhappy that he did have to lose.